Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday morning to you. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. We are doing a word study, a thematic study of the resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're, we're demonstrating that the words that Paul uses simply do not support the idea that he's talking about the raising of a biological body. Please go back and look at our videos as we look at the words mortal or corruptible or vile or, you know, all of those words that are translated there and to see that there is a constant chain of contrast in Paul's discussion between the natural man and the spiritual man. Now, I shared with you in the last video that we would take a look at this concept of the image, the image of Adam, the image of Christ, because this is, this is amazing stuff. Do not forget, and I'll have more to say about this in tomorrow's video, because we, boy, I tell you what, just a discussion of the concept of Paul's discussion of the image of Adam, the image of Christ is an incredibly rich, incredibly powerful study, research study. And guess what? It verifies everything I'm sharing with you here, that when Paul talks about the image of Adam versus the image of Christ, he's not focused on biology. He's not focused on somatic substance. He is focused on man either outside of Christ or man in Christ. Now, this is confirmed when Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 49, and this, boy, this is something. I, I, I remember well about the first time I ever ran across this, and it was like, whoa, wait a minute. Well, that can't be true. If we're talking about biology, if we're talking about bodily substance, that can't be true. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 15, 49, as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Okay, wait a minute. We have two images here. Image of Adam. Image of dust. Image of Christ. The heavenly man. Is it not once again, readily apparent that he is not contrasting biological substance. I mean, after all, you know, we're told uh, that Christ is in a flesh and blood body right now, in heaven. Oh, well, wait a minute. A flesh and blood body is the body that he had in, in his incarnation, the body of his pure humanity, a body of dust, like Adam. Oh, but that's not what Paul's talking about here. I want you to catch the power of this. Paul says, as we have born, that is in the Greek, an aorist tense, which means a past tense. Now, if Paul's talking about the image of Adam, from the dust, referring to solely biological substance, then he says, well, you know, uh, at one time we were in the dust. We were up, our bodies were made of dust. But now we're not. Really? We are once again in the realm of Romans chapter 8. Remember, Romans 8 and 1 Corinthians 15 are parallel to one another. And Paul says, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Well, let's see. Paul says, as we have borne the image of the first man who is of the dust, we shall also bear the image of the one that is of the heaven. Wait a minute. That's the heavenly man. That's the spiritual man. That's the transformed man. A whole lot more about that later. But do you see 
what Paul is doing. He's saying exactly the same thing that he did in Romans. But when he says you are not in the flesh, isn't it not, is it not more than apparent that he's not talking about you are not in a physical body? Likewise, right here he says, as we have past tense born the image of the man of dust. Well, what is the man of dust in Paul's comparison here? It's the natural man. The body of mortality. The body of corruptibility. The body of shame. None of which he has applied to the biological human body. Now, in tomorrow's video, I'm going to share something even more powerful than this with you. But the fact that Paul uses the aorist tense. Now, he could, be, could he be using this in sort of a, a, a gnomic way, uh, not indicating a reality of a past event? Well, linguistically, that might be theoretically possible. However, in the contrast and in the context of what he says here, in the context of Romans 8, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. In the context of Ephesians 4, in the context of Colossians 3, all of which passages, Paul says, you have put off the old man. Put on, therefore, the new man who is created in the image of of the one who created him. In all of these passages, we have the exact precise motifs. We have the first man, Adam, the body of corruption, the body of flesh, the body of the natural man, versus the spiritual man being created in the image of Christ. And again, in tomorrow's video, I will drive this point home because this is incredible. But for now, I hope you can see that Paul's discussion in 1 Corinthians 15 when he says, as we have borne the image of the man of dust, it cannot refer to biological bodies. Jesus had a body from the dust in his incarnation. But Paul is contrasting Adam from the dust and Christ out of heaven. Not biological substance, natures, realms. Remember, the first man, Adam, was simply a living, a living being. Well, Jesus was a living being. First man was of the earth, earthy. The second man is out of heaven. Well, Jesus was of the earth. The word became flesh and dwelt among men. We have a threefold contrast here in Paul's discussion of the first man, Adam, the second man, Adam. None of them can be not logically, not contextually. They cannot be a contrast between biological bodies. Once again, join me tomorrow for our discussion of the image of Christ. In the meantime, get yourself a copy of this book by Daniel Rogers, The Last Enemy and the Triumph of Christ. Go to my website, BibleProphecy.com, order the book, and be sure to send me a note letting me know that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund you everything except $8. Total cost, $8. All right? Don't miss tomorrow. We'll see you on the flip side.